Hey, let's talk a little bit about the proper handling of your crucible. So you're going to be receiving a crucible from the stock room. But importantly is we once we get it, we don't want to get our fingerprints or any of the skin oils of ours onto this surface. So we're going to use crucible tongs. Notice that the tongs have a pointy ends here. We use that for the lid. We're going to have a lid this time. And then there's a curved uh, section here. And we're going to make a little scoop with that. And that's what we're going to use to hold our crucible. Always have a piece of paper towel underneath just to make sure that in case it slips out, you can catch it uh, and you don't drop it on the floor. Okay, I'm going to take it to our workstation there in the fume hood and show you what we're going to do next. On my way to the fume hood, it occurred to me that one of the objectives of preheating the crucible besides getting it clean, is also to see if we can detect any cracks, any fractures in it. The problem is that sometimes these are like micro cracks, micro fractures, and we can't see them. So one little trick I do is before I go there and start cleaning it is I'm gonna put it on the bench and I'm gonna use my striker, I'm gonna hit it. And I should get a kind of like a bell type of sound. If I get a sound that's kind of like a, like a hollow kind of sound like that, it probably means that there might be some micro fractures, which means I might want to go replace it with another uh, crucible. Okay, so again, I'm going to tap it gently and try to hear a little bell type of sound. All right. This is one of our Bunsen burners. Yes, it's kind of rusty and old, but it works. Before we start, make sure you inspect the hose, make sure there are no cracks in it that might cause a leak. From the stock room, you should have gotten a striker. When you squeeze it, it creates a spark that will let you turn on your Bunsen burner. Once the master gas valve is turned on for the whole lab, you should be able to have access to your individual gas valves in your fume hoods. Now the one on my bench top is a little different, but what I want to do is I want to turn it on until I hear a hissing sound coming from my Bunsen burner. That's the gas coming out. And once I do that, I should be able to go back here. Oops, sorry. I should be able to go back here and turn it on. And just like the 1960s song used to say, it only takes one spark to get a fire going. Oh yeah. In other words, uh, if you are scared it and of this and you start kind of like going like this very timidly, what's going to happen is you're going to be squeezing this in such a way that it doesn't create a spark. So be bold, just put it right on top of it and just squeeze it one time and that should be enough. The next thing I want to do is I want to adjust the flame. Of course, I can adjust the height of the flame by controlling the amount of gas that I put in there. So I'm going to put a little bit less. I'm going to shut it down just a tad just to get a little less. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the collar here at the bottom of the barrel, between the barrel and the base. That's my air valve. And I am going to, in this case, open it slightly to get more air to go in. So I can generate a flame that is not yellowish and smoky, but actually has an inside sky blue cone and an outer kind of purple, dark blue kind of cone. It's never going to be perfect because, like I said, our Bunsen burners are kind of rusty and they have some stuff in them. But that would be the one that you get. You're not always going to get a perfect flame. Our fume hoods, because of the uh, draft of the air going through them, might not allow you to get a straight flame like this. Which is sometimes why, instead of putting the Bunsen burner underneath the object we're going to heat, we actually hold the Bunsen burner by the base and we kind of wave the flame over the uh, either crucible or if it's a test tube, the test tube and so forth. Don't forget, if for some reason the flame goes out while you're still working, don't try to light it up right away. Rather, you know, turn off the gas over here and then start again. Let it vent and start again. Don't forget that in the case of an accident, we have a master gas valve in the underneath the instructor's bench and we can shut down the gas 
for the whole lab. I'm going to turn it off and then we're going to go ahead and get started with our experiment. Okay, we're here in the fume hood where we're going to be performing our experiment. I already have my Bunsen burner lit on. I'm going to push it out of the way. Notice I have a ring stand. I have a ring support and I also have a clay triangle that I'm going to put in there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my crucible, which I obtained from the stock. Remember, always handle it with the crucible tongs and a piece of paper towel underneath. I'm going to put it on the clay triangle, let it sit there, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the Bunsen burner, and I'm going to let that heat for a few minutes. This is just to clean it in case there are any residues of somebody using it before. So I want to use a regular flame. And uh, if remember, if you want to intensify, you open the gas valve, you manipulate the air valve so you can get better heat. So the idea here is to bring it up to where it's kind of like a dull red. All right, that'll take a few moments. And then once we finish that, we will let it sit there without the Bunsen burner for about five minutes to cool down to room temperature. And then we'll take it to the balance room to weight the crucible and then add our sample. Okay, we are here at the analytical balance. We're about to weight our starting materials. The first thing we're going to do is make sure that the balance is in a zero here. Make sure that the windows are closed to make sure that is accurate. And then what we're going to do is we are going to, like I said, make sure that is in zero. Remember that any vibrations, any leaning on the bench will actually affect this very sensitive instrument. So here we go, I'm gonna open the little window here. And now, either because you know our teammate or ourselves were here, we're bringing in the crucible in our crucible tongs. This has been preheated to clean it and we have a paper towel underneath. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place it in there very carefully. You don't wanna touch it with your hands after you've cleaned it. And write down what the mass of the crucible is. Let it settle. Usually when this little zero goes up here, 35.4837 grams. That is the mass of our crucible. Now I'm going to add my uh, sample. Your sample was given to you in a test tube with enough for two trials. So what I did was I split it into two so that I have exactly one trial's worth in here. Now it's very approximate. So you might exactly have 0.2 grams or not, but... The experiment only calls for approximately 0.2 grams. So your task is to measure out exactly what the uh, mass is to four decimal digits. All right. So what I'm going to do is while my teammate holds the test tube for me, I'm going to come back in here and very carefully open and using again my crucible tongs, I am going to bring my crucible out. I don't want to pour anything while it's in the balance because I don't risk any spillage. And I'm going to bring it over here and maybe hold it in the paper towel. And then I'm gonna pour in my solid in there. There it is. And then very carefully, again, I'm gonna grab it with my crucible tongs and I'm gonna bring it back into the balance. Very carefully, okay, put it down and then let go very carefully. Close the window and let's write down what the mass is that we have in here, 35.82. One, two. So that is our starting material. And now we're going to take it back to start the chemical reaction so we can begin our analysis. Okay, I brought back my sample to my bench. And now the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to wash down the sides of the crucible with dilute sulfuric acid. We will have two bottles, so make sure you know which one's which. So I have here, this is dilute sulfuric acid. Remember that whenever you dispense uh, chemicals from a reagent bottle, you don't want the lid to touch anything else. So I'm gonna hold the lid between my small finger and the palm of my hand, and I'm gonna use the dropper. And I'm gonna drop down 
20 drops of the dilute sulfuric acid and I'm gonna put them down the sides of the crucible here, all right? So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I have that in there. I'm gonna replace the dispenser pipette in there and I am going to cover the lid again, all right? Now this was mainly to get all of the solid down towards the bottom. Okay, now I'm gonna be adding the concentrated sulfuric acid. Again, make sure that you don't get them mixed up. Once more, I want to remove the lid carefully. This is a coin stopper type of lid. So I'm gonna loosen it up and then pick it up between my two fingers and hold it in there while I very slowly dispense 20 drops of concentrated sulfuric acid. This needs to be done in the fume hood because it'll emit very uh, irritating fumes. So we're gonna put in 20 drops in here. There we go. And then replace it. Let me show you how irritating this is and the reason I had this paper towel. Watch what happens if I drop a little bit of it in here. You can see how it's getting dark and eventually it'll burn a hole into the paper. And that's what it could do to your skin, all right? So now I have my mixture in here, and what I'm gonna do is once more, come back here with my crucible tongs, and with my paper towel, I'm gonna pick it up, and I'm gonna bring it back to my station where I'm gonna be heating the mixture. Okay, here is my crucible sitting back on the uh, clay triangle as you can see the bunsen burner is going so what i'm going to do is very carefully i'm going to put it underneath and i'm going to start heating my mixture now i don't want to sustain the heat there what i want to do is i'm going to kind of like kind of like sweep around to get the heat in there but not too much because i don't want this mixture splattering now what will happen is and i don't know if you'll be able to settle uh, to tell this in the video is that as the reaction goes inside there it's gonna start vaporizing water and some of the acid, and you're gonna start seeing fumes come out. You might wanna put some kind of like darker thing in the background so you can visualize it. Here we go. This is our reaction. Again, like I said, we're gonna go through it and there'll be fumes coming out of the inside. You can probably see them now, all right? The main thing is not to let the thing splatter all over the place. If it starts boiling too much, pull the flame away, let it settle a little bit, and then come back. And like I said, just wave it around. Just get enough heat to get the uh, acid to boil off and the reaction to happen, as you can see the fumes coming out there, right? And what you'll do is you'll do this until the fumes stop. Here you can see here where the fumes, the smoke is coming out, you know, full blast. And again, I've kind of like removed a little bit of the flame just to not get it too hot and so it won't start splattering all over the place. Okay, we're gonna continue doing this until it stops smoking in there. Okay, at this point, the smoke stopped. We're not having any fumes anymore. So what we're gonna do is, to finish off the reaction, is I'm gonna bring my Bunsen burner with the hottest part of the flame and apply it to the bottom of the crucible and try to see if I can get it to heat to a dull red color. The idea here is to fi basically finish off the reaction, whatever was left there. There should be no more fumes coming out. And again, if you cannot get the bottom of the crucible to turn to a dull red color. Uh, just do this for a couple of minutes. Just let it sit there for a couple of minutes. Okay, I'm gonna jump ahead and pretend that this is done. I'm gonna pull my Bunsen burner away and now I wanna let my crucible sit there and cool down to room temperature before I take it back to the balance room so I can wait it and calculate what is the mass of the product that was formed after the reaction. After I do that, I'm gonna bring it back and I'm gonna re-add the sulfuric acid according to your instructions and repeat the process. And that is to make sure that all any residual reactants in there have a chance to finish reacting. I wanna make sure that 
the mass that I measure at the end of the procedure is representative of just product being there. This is called heating to constant mass, okay? We're gonna do that and then we'll work on some sample calculations. Okay, we are back here in the balanced room and we're gonna weight now the crucible with the product that came out as a result of our reaction of our mixture with sulfuric acid. Now it's very important that once we picked a analytical balance to do our measurements, we need to stick with the same one for the dura uh, duration of the experiment. So this is the one that I use to weight my empty crucible and then my crucible with my sample of mixture. And now I'm gonna use the same one to weight my product. Once more, by this point, I've allowed it to cool down and I'm gonna use my crucible tongs to put it back in there. All right, I notice that the scale is on zero. Again, very carefully, I'm gonna bring it in. I'm gonna place it on the balance there. It's very important that the crucible will be cooled down to room temperature. Otherwise, you're gonna get a lot of drafts and stuff inside the uh, chamber that's gonna affect your reading. So our reading is 36.0819 grams. This would be the weight of the crucible plus our product. If you want to stick a little bit, you can put it 0 0.0820 if you want to let it stabilize. Okay, so now we have the measurement and now we can proceed to our calculations. Okay, at the end of the procedure, we need to take care of a few things. For example, let's say that you had some splattering over your surface of your bench here when you were doing the heating. Of course, our natural tendency is to come in with a wipe, with a paper towel and just wipe it. You cannot do that. We had to first neutralize it because some of that stuff was concentrated sulfuric acid. So just let your instructor know and we will come in with some of this sodium bicarbonate, essentially baking soda. And we're gonna pour some in there and then we're gonna neutralize it before we wipe it clean, all right? The other thing you'll have to do is we need to dispose of the waste and clean the crucible and you'll have the instructions for that in your lab manual, okay? When you finish, make sure you scrape off as much of the solid into the waste container as you can. And then what we're gonna do next is we've prepared a beaker with water that was heated to boiling. We've turned it down now so it doesn't bubble around so much. We've added a little bit of hydrochloric acid to it. So what we're gonna do is very carefully take our crucible and very carefully kind of like put it in there. All right. And kind of like gently drop it in there and let it soak there in the hot acid water for a few minutes. When you're done, you will pull it out, rinse it in the sink, and then you can return it to the stockroom. All right, and that's it.